Hola friends, welcome to another episode of Makeup with Elf. If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Jahaira. Today's makeup video is going to be a little bit different because we are going to be talking about brushes. More specifically, we are going to be talking about face brushes. What makes me the most excited about making this video is that it was actually requested. So this is my first ever requested video and I'm super excited to kind of break down all of the different brushes that are needed or that could be used for a beginner. I have a ton of brushes, I love collecting brushes, and so I'm gonna talk through them in a little bit of detail. I do wanna say that it is 100% like personal preference, so where I would prefer, say, a blender, some other people might prefer a brush. So I'm gonna talk to you about all of the options that you have available to you, and then I'll tell you what my favorite is. That way you can try it. Today, because I did wanna focus on the face, I already did my eye look, so as you can see, I have this smoky eye going on, and what I did was I used the Christine Dominique Latte palette to do that. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I love Dominique Cosmetic products. I use them all the time, and this is the easiest palette for me. It has a bunch of neutrals in it, um, but really warm tone colors as well. Because this video is going to focus on the face, I'm actually going to do a follow-up video focusing on just eye look brushes. So we're gonna do a second video in this series, and I figured I would just make it a series of like beginner makeup. I am still in that beginner stage where I'm still learning things and I'm still um, watching a lot of tutorials to kind of guide me through my makeup, but I feel like I'm also in this stage of being able to help others. So I will break down everything that I know and that I've learned from watching tons of videos and doing makeup and hopefully you like this video. Because I am known for wearing my Minnie Mouse ears in these videos, I chose to use my absolute favorite ones. They are super comfortable actually, and I just love them. So I'm gonna be wearing these rolled gold Minnie Mouse ears for the entire beginner series that I create, along with this awesome rose gold mirror. I really just think that rose gold was my 2019 color, and it's gonna transition into 2020. So you're gonna see these ears, and when you see these ears in the video, you'll know but I'm doing a beginner series video. So if you wanna see how I get my final look and all the brushes that I use to do my makeup, just continue watching. I already went ahead and moisturized my face off camera just to make sure that that sunk in a little bit. So we are gonna move on to the first step in our actual makeup, which is the primer. I'm gonna be using the Pretty Fresh Primer from ColourPop. And if you are putting this on with a brush, I recommend something a little bit more fluffy, like this adorable Sugar Rush brush that I have. Um, that allows for that primer to kind of really fit into your skin, but I'm actually going to be using my hands for my primer first. So I'm going to put a couple pumps of this primer into my hands. I'm going to rub it into my hands to warm it up. And this is a super important step because if you are using any kind of product, you want to make sure that it's nice and warm and it sinks into your skin. That way it doesn't just kind of like sit on the top of your face and look very cakey. This is going to allow that product to warm up and sink right in. If you are anything like me, you actually have a bunch of different primers or you like different looks at different times. So right now I'm going for more of a glowy look. If you are gonna use one of the poreless primers like the Topshop primer or the e.l.f. poreless putty primer, you're gonna want to take that in your hands, warm it up as well, and then just kind of dab it into your face. But since this primer is more of a moisturizing primer, I just kind of put it on just like I would lotion. I'm gonna give that just a second to sit onto my face while we talk about foundation. Now, foundation is super interesting because there are tons of different ways to put on foundation. And we're gonna talk about all the products and all of the different types of brushes that it will take to put on foundation, but to do it very flawlessly. So I have a couple of different brushes, and all of these different brushes are actually really good. I've tried them all individually. Um, and I really like how they work. Um, so first let's talk about these really dense pack brushes. So this one is from BoxyCharm and I got it in my November Boxy. And the brushes here are like super dense. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but basically it's like when you place it onto your skin, it doesn't, like the brushes don't move around too much. That allows for that product to really sit on top and you'll be able to blend that out pretty seamlessly. The same thing goes for something like the Eco Tools brush, which is this one right here. It is very packed and so that product will sit at the very top and basically what you're doing is you're moving that foundation around with the brush. Um, so these nice densely packed 
are great for full coverage foundation. The next brushes we have here for foundation are something similar to paddle brushes. And paddle brushes are gonna be a little bit thinner on the sides and essentially they're gonna be packed, but you can see that they do have some wiggle room when you are brushing. And so you're gonna see that the brushes do move just a little bit more, meaning that that foundation is gonna soak a little bit more into the brush. And so when you are applying it, it's not gonna be as full coverage, but it is gonna give you a nice seamless foundation. Um, and so generally when you're using brushes like this, this one is a crown brush doesn't really have a number or anything like that um, and then a Real Techniques 2000 foundation brush but essentially when you're using something like this you want to put multiple layers of that foundation on your face if you want a full coverage foundation if you want something a little bit more lighter you can just go in with this one brush and it's absolutely beautiful and then the last thing I'm going to talk about are the sponges so there are tons of different sponges out on the market and I have honestly tried so many of them and I'm here to talk about my favorite one. So the tried and true beauty blender is a really good one if you are willing to spend $20 on a blender. The beauty blender is great, like it's awesome. Um, the one thing about beauty blenders and just kind of blenders in general is that when you are applying your foundation, um, you don't want to swipe it onto your face, you want to pat it onto your face. But also blenders tend to soak up product just a little bit. Doesn't matter what blender it is, it's going to soak up product. But there are great alternatives to the Beauty Blender that I want to talk about because I did find my favorite. We have the Real Techniques Blender and this is commonly known as like the hand in hand to the Beauty Blender. They do feel a little bit different, like the Beauty Blender feels a little bit more spongy versus the Real Techniques brush it feels kind of... I don't know how to explain it, like a little bit more plasticky. It feels like the Real Techniques Blender tends to soak up a little bit more product than the Beauty Blender, um, but it is a great cheap alternative. You can find this in Target and Walmart. You can find it in like Ross and TJ Maxx sometimes. So um, this is a great alternative. Next we have the Morphe Blender. Morphe has blenders that actually have different shapes to it. And so I love this blender for like a concealer because the tip kind of fits perfectly under my eye and then a powder to kind of set that powder under my eye too but it works really well with foundation um, if you get the right kind of angle to be able to pat that onto your face so I really really love the Morphe blender and then the last blender I want to talk about is the Sonia Kashik blender Kashak Kashik I don't know how to pronounce the name properly but this blender is super cool because it actually feels very similar to the beauty blender in that it's nice and spongy. It's actually a lot larger, so you'll see in comparison, it's such a large blending brush, um, which can kind of get in the way sometimes if you're trying to pat your face, you get a lot of surface area. But if you have like a smaller face or you're trying to get into like the small parts of your face, it isn't necessarily the best for that. Uh, but it does kind of pat your foundation out very, very quickly. My favorite technique right now is actually using the Morphe blender. And I love it because it actually has so many different angles that you can work with. And typically when I'm doing my makeup look, I'll use this for foundation, then concealer. Um, and then I'll use it for powder. So I use the entire circumference of the sponge. Um, one thing I will advise with the Morphe sponge is that when you take it out of the packaging and you wet it for the first time, it is gonna feel very hard. And so what you wanna do is you want to constantly use it, learn how to work with it. But honestly, this sponge is my personal favorite. So there are people who prefer the Beauty Blender or prefer the Real Technique sponge. Some people swear by the Sonia Kashik and I actually really love this one. I'm just learning how to kind of work with this one because it's so big. Um, but the Morphe blender is actually my favorite. So this is the one I'll be using for my foundation. So typically what I'll do is I will take foundation and I will just basically draw lines across my face. And they are not like very thick lines. I want to look like a cat or a tiger sometimes. And I'm going to let that sit just for a couple seconds because I want that to, again, warm up on my face. Just like we did with the primer, we want it to warm up. Now using the damp blender, so basically I held it underwater for a couple seconds. As I held it underwater, basically I squeezed the water out of it. It kind of grew up a little bit, but you want it to be damp without actually pouring out water when you squeeze it. After that sat there for just a couple of seconds, we are going to just blend it out.
I am going for a soft glowy look today. So I want something that's a little bit more moisturizing. I do have some hyperpigmentation on my cheeks right now. So we're going to cover that with concealer, but not with the foundation that I'm applying now. And so notice that as I'm applying this makeup, I am basically just pressing and moving on to the rest of my face. So basically the blender is bouncing on my face. Off camera, I did my eyebrows, but just the bottom of my eyebrows. And then at the very end of the makeup tutorial, I'll fix my eyebrow because I tend to kind of get very close to my eyebrow. I'm scared that there's gonna be like a line of no product on my eyebrow if I stay too far away from it. So we will work with that. So right now what I'm doing is most of the product is sitting at the very end of my brush. I'm going to turn my brush so that it soaks up just a little bit more of that product. That way it doesn't look like oily on my skin. And I'm just going to, with the clean side of the blender, going to continue on. And then I'm going to take that right down my neck. What I'm using for this foundation is actually the Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. So actually see like the redness in my cheeks, you can still see like my birthmark. Basically I don't want it to be super full coverage. But anything that I do want to cover, I'll use my concealer to do it, which moves me on to the next point, which is concealer. For concealer, I'm going to use the Boing Benefit Concealer. And for concealer, people tend to do a lot of different things. And so there are three concealer brushes that I didn't want to talk about, I have used before, that are really great. The first is the Real Techniques Concealer Brush. I actually just got this concealer brush and I really like this brush for like getting right on the inside of the eye to make sure that this part looks seamless. After I put concealer on, I'll show you and I'll use this one um, to get like right on the side of the nose, to get into like the little crevices of your face. This one is super awesome. Next we have the, this is a blending brush actually, an eye blending brush from Luxie. It is the Luxie 250 brush. Um, and I like to use this as a concealer brush because it has like the depth of a concealer brush. Like it's a nice like thick brush. So I kind of like to use that to kind of get right into those small areas right under my eye and kind of brush that out if I'm going to use a brush versus like a sponge on my fingers. And then the last one is the Luxie 140 Detailed Taper Blender. I really actually love this one for concealer um, because of the unique shape that it has. So this brush is super cute. It actually has Wonder Woman just right here in the middle and I've never seen that before, which I'm totally in love with. There's actually a Wonder Woman logo right at the very top and I've literally never noticed that and I've used this brush so many times. But anyway, so the shape of it is super interesting because it can get right into like the corner of your eye. You can actually shape your eyebrows really well with concealer with this brush just because of the way that it's angled. And so this brush is super awesome. You can get into like the side of your nose. I know a lot of people who actually have very indented noses right on the side here. So a brush like this would be perfect just to kind of get the tip of the brush right into the side of the nose. So for the concealer, I am just going to go ahead and place it in all of the usual places. So I'm going to place a couple dots right underneath my eye. I'm going to place it on the sides of my mouth. The sides of my mouth tend to get very dark and they crease a lot. So I wanna make sure that I have concealer on the sides of my mouth. I wanna put some right underneath my chin here. I'm gonna bring it right down the bridge of my nose and then right on my forehead. Bring a little bit of light to the middle of my forehead. I'm also gonna take my concealer and cover this birthmark and a little bit of my cheeks. Like I don't want all of the red gone, but I do want a little bit more coverage. <laughs> I just saw myself, I look crazy. And I am actually going to take the blender first, so the same Morphe blender, and I am going to blend that out. I'm gonna take that all the way to basically my temples because I want that lightness to follow through on my whole face. And as I mentioned before, a perfect thing about this blender is the straight edge that it has at the very end. And I'm just going to press that right underneath my eye so that it blends absolutely perfectly. I don't know if you can tell, but like the redness in my cheeks did kind of go away. And so I brought the color all the way to the end. We're gonna go ahead and work through this side next. With that excess product, because the blender does hold that product that's a little bit extra in those areas, 
I'm just going to keep moving it into other areas where I haven't physically placed that concealer. So if you can't tell any coverage that I didn't get with my foundation or the tinted moisturizer, I definitely got with that concealer. I feel like it brightened and lightened my entire face. And we are going to go ahead and move on to setting the face. Before I move on to powder, I just want to make sure that everything is nice and even. There's no creases kind of happening. And what I typically do when I'm setting my under eye, because I have very bad under eye circles and under eye bags, is I basically like tilt my face weird against the mirror let me show you so essentially what I'll do is I'll place my mirror very high so I'm placing it almost above my head here and I am going to look up into the mirror so I'm looking into the mirror that way the bottom of my lid flattens out essentially I want it to be like not necessarily in its natural state I want it to be extended a little bit so I'm looking up into my mirror with my head bent down so that it is the flattest that it could possibly be and so I don't move my mirror I move my face but my chin is facing down my mirror is and I'm looking up at my mirror which brings me into powder so there are two different ways that I absolutely love putting powder onto my face and I'm actually going to show you both of them so I'm going to show you how I apply the powder with my blending brush and I'm also going to show you how I apply the powder with this nice fluffy brush this is a Luxie precision foundation um, but I actually use this for powder because of the way that it's shaped it is super fluffy it kind of has that like rounded shape to it at the very top meaning that it'll pick up powder but it won't hold the powder in the brush itself and I don't want tons of product going under my eye I don't bake because my under eyes do tend to crease a lot. Um, so I don't bake, but I do like to set my under eye. If I don't set my under eye, it will definitely crease. But if I bake, I feel like it creases more. I don't know how to explain that, but it just generally does. So I'm gonna be using the Kylie Jenner Pink Powder. It is currently my favorite, especially when I don't color correct under my eye. I feel like it tends to really like highlight that part of the eye without looking like stark white basically it conceals those circles so I put the powder on the tip of my brush just on one side and I'm going to press that into my eye so I'm doing pressing motions not wiping motions but the same way that I'm holding my held my mirror to put it on my concealer I'm going to use it for the brush as well so I'm going to place that right underneath my eye and then in all of those places that I just put concealer. The place where I actually need to set the most is underneath my chin because I feel like underneath my chin creases so much that I need to set that 100% before I walk out the door. So with that same brush, I'm just gonna wipe off the excess because I really wanna set that before I move on to the rest of my face, but I don't want that powder hanging out on my face. Next, I'm going to use the Morphe sponge. And we're going to do almost the same thing. We are going to put a little bit of that powder into the lid. And you don't need a ton. And you're going to pick up that powder using the blender so that it looks something like this. Now depending on how moist your brush is, that's how well it's going to apply underneath your eye. So essentially the same motion, you're not going to swipe it onto the eye. We are going to press and pat that underneath the eye. I'm pressing it the same way I would put on foundation, just a little bit lighter. I'm just pressing that right underneath there. And then we're going to set on the side of the mouth, again under the chin just because we kind of have to, and right down the nose. When I'm using the blender, I do need to wipe off a little bit more than when I'm using the brush. But again, personal preference, I don't mind either look. They look very similar to each other. But that's how you use both the brush and the blender to set underneath your eyes. If you are the kind of person that wants to try baking and kind of setting that makeup very heavily, um, I highly recommend a nice, big, fluffy brush to wipe it off. So essentially you want something that's super light, super airy, and super fluffy. And you're just going to wipe that right off of your face. If you have watery eyes, 
Baking probably is not the best thing for you because that powder kind of sits in your waterline and it tends to like get in there and cause your eyes to water a little bit more. And if you are baking and that powder sitting underneath your eye and your eye starts to water, you'll see like the crease of the little teardrops that are falling out of your eye. So if your eyes watery, if you are sensitive to makeup just around this area here, I highly recommend setting your eye the same way I just did versus, versus baking your eye. But anyway, a nice powder brush or a nice like kind of clean it are these two brushes here. I kind of got bamboozled into this one just because it was so pretty like I feel like it's super adorable but this Tarte brush almost exactly like does the same thing super awesome as this Real Techniques powder brush. Um, they are both super awesome, super fluffy. I just like the feeling of big brushes and they are both super awesome. Next, we are gonna move on into contour look using the Huda Beauty Tantor. This is my absolute favorite, um, but I do only use it when I have a ton of time or I'm just kind of playing around with makeup because we have to do a ton of blending to get this to look perfect, so I will show you that. But there are tons of different ways that you can potentially contour your face. And so I wanna talk about those different ways that you can do it and then get into like how we're gonna contour today. So you can go the cream contour way, which was what we'll be doing today where you can go the foundation way where you can go like the concealer type way just kind of dot it onto your face or they have products specifically for cream contour like the tantor um, again like what we'll be using and then there is the powder contour where you can use like a darker deeper bronzer or you can use a contour palette and these are all powder contours um, and either way works perfectly I highly recommend if you are powder contouring that you have a good setting spray or you spray your face with like a dewy or matte fix plus um, because that way the powder turns more into a skin like look so if you are going to powder contour your face make sure that you have a good setting spray with it but we are going to go into this tantor and the different brushes that you can use for these types of things so we have the typical contour brush and these come in all shapes and sizes and forms but essentially they do have like this angle and these are absolutely the best for like bronzer and a powder contour just because it really gets into like the shape of whatever that contour is going to be then we have this contour brush which is a little bit longer it really is used to kind of really buff out that contour um, this one is a firmo 102 and the angled one is a firmo 103 so you can either use an angled one to kind of fit into the shape of that contour or one where you can blend out your contour a little bit better again the bristles do move very well but for cream contour I highly suggest something a lot more denser very similar to a foundation brush because you want to be able to buff it out without like digging the brush into your face if you apply the brush or a lot of pressure onto the brush it's going to kind of pull on that foundation and take that foundation off of your face so you really want to buff very lightly and kind of blend out that contour very 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 lightly so this does take a little bit of a longer time when you're using that cream and you are trying to buff it out to the shape that you want to um, but this angled brush from Huda Beauty it comes with the <laughs> Tantor and so these work super perfectly together so the way that this brush works and you can mimic this with store-bought brushes again you want something super dense like a foundation brush probably angled so that it fits into the contours of your face this down here is like a concealer brush. So if you use those two brushes, you can basically recreate this one brush. So I'm going to dig into the Tantor, and this is in the shade Tan. This is super dark, but we're gonna blend it out. So don't worry when I put this on my face. And I'm just going to do a little line right there. I'm gonna do a little line on the other side. I'm going to line underneath my lip, right above my lip. I'm going to take that underneath my chin. I like to kind of build out basically the outline of my face as well. So I want this to look a little bit skinnier. Same thing on this side. I'm going to place a couple of dots right above my head. And then I'm going to draw two small lines, one on each side of my nose. Now that I'm looking very crazy, I'm going to use the other side of the brush. And I'm going to kind of brush I'm almost barely touching my skin so 
I'm very, very lightly kind of just blending out that color. So again, if you press too hard with a brush like this, it's gonna take that foundation off of your face. So you wanna just kind of brush very lightly, circular motion so that it creates the shape that you want. And I'm going towards my hairline, not down into my face because you want that to be towards like the outer edges of the face. For the product right down here, I drag that underneath my chin so that it gives that part of my chin a nice shadow and it basically disappears in like pictures and stuff. Even for the side of my nose, it is pretty big, um, but I am very lightly just kind of sweeping that color down my nose. I'm not pressing into my nose. I feel like that's a big, big deal and why I keep repeating myself just because if you just worked really hard on putting on your foundation and then it comes off when you're putting on your contour, it was basically all for nothing. So I'm gonna make sure everything is blended out very seamlessly. So notice that that color was very dark and it kind of blended out to like this ashy, almost natural shadow on my face. Um, when I do contour with the Tantor, I tend to do like a nice warm tone bronzer to go along with it. What I'm gonna do on the side of my nose is I'm actually going to use a concealer brush, or this is actually a blending brush, and I'm going to take that right down the side of my nose just to have a little bit more precision with it. So there are areas on my face that got just a little bit too dark with the contour, like the contour kind of came very low on my forehead. This doesn't look very straight or flat, or flattering right down here. So I'm actually gonna take my blender with all that excess concealer and I'm going to reshape the way that my contour looks. So if you mess up with your contour, it's totally fine because it is cream. It's okay to repat into that that you already had on the blender itself. I'm not adding any extra product, but when you are using a powder contour, that's not necessarily the case. It's a little bit harder to kind of get rid of those mistakes. Alrighty, so now that I have that contour in all the places that I wanted it to go, we are going to move on to bronzer. So the same brushes that I showed you for powdered contour, we are going to use for bronzer. I'm going to use this angled brush and I'm going to be using the Butter Bronzer. It is very light on my skin. I have a little bit of a deeper skin tone sometimes <laughs> in the summer. Um, but it has like that warm tone to it that is really going to kind of sit on top and set this contour, but it's gonna look super pretty. So basically all of the areas that I just went through with the contour, I'm just gonna take that powder right over it. I feel like I need to blend this side out just a little bit better. Next we are gonna move on to blush. And blush is my absolute favorite, like most favorite step of all time. I have two blush brushes that I wanna talk about. Um, and I mostly wanna talk about them for their shape versus like what they can do. You can honestly put blush on with any kind of brush. Maybe not like a tiny one, but that's not the point. But anything that's nice and fluffy, you can put blush on with it. You can even put on blush with your fingers, but let's talk about these two. So the first one is actually the Ulta Beauty Cheek Brush actually has like this nice stone shape. It's very similar to a powder brush, but the bristles are a little bit longer in that they actually really move around very lightly on your face with blush, and it looks absolutely stunning when you use this brush. The next one is the Luxie 514 Blush, and this is not a sponsorship for Luxie. I actually tend to get Luxie brushes in my Ipsy box all the time, um, but they have pretty good brushes. So this blush brush is angled and it is very soft, so you can see it's like very bendy. The bristles are longer, just like that first brush that I showed you, but it actually has a bigger surface for you to apply on the apples of your cheeks and kind of like move it up. Very similar to a contour brush, it kind of allows you to get that really great shape that people tend to go for. So I'm going to use this Luxie brush for my blush. And for blush, I am using the Super Shock Cheek Between the Sheets blush from ColourPop. And I love, love this color. Like these colors, these like darker colors tend to go with looks that are a little bit more natural, just like what I'm going for today. And I'm taking that blush and I am kind of basically patting it onto my face. And all of those areas that I want it to go, the tip of my nose, right above my eyebrows. And then I tend to take that right all over my face basically. 
Like I love blush so, so much. Very sadly, we are getting into our last set of brushes and it is actually one of my favorite parts. So no, blush is my favorite part. My second favorite part. It is highlight and highlight is something that I didn't used to use. Um, I really focus on like the blush and the contour mainly. Um, but highlight recently or lately, I think it was actually over the summer when I really started to like see my the set in my face in the sun and it was glowy that I like fell in love with highlight. But we are going to be using the Ofra Highlighter Rodeo Drive. So we have two of my absolute favorite brushes for highlight. We have the fan brush. This is actually a brush from LA Colors. Every brush company makes one of these. This one was actually super cheap and I like it because it's a little bit thicker than your average fan brush. So you get a little bit more highlight, more pixie dust. Um, and then the second one is the Real Techniques setting brush and it was not meant to be a highlighting brush but I think this is actually like a perfect shape for just kind of getting right into you know the small areas of your face um, so I really love both of them and I'm gonna be using both of them for this tutorial so first I'm gonna go in with my fan brush and basically I just take that on the side that's actually going directly onto my face and I'm gonna wipe that just a little bit tapping off the excess just like absolutely everything else and I'm literally just fanning that onto my cheekbone. And a fan brush is absolutely perfect because it basically sits on the top of your like cheekbone. And when you're brushing down, it doesn't go down too quickly in that it's adding too much product lower onto your face. It really just applies right onto the basic area. We're gonna put that right on our chin. And then we are going to take the setting brush, same thing, just apply a little bit. And we are going to buff this out just a little bit we don't want it to look crazy but we do want it to look a little bit natural like you naturally glisten I do I don't know about you and just buff out that highlight. then we're going to tap that right on the tip of our nose right over our eyebrows and right in my cupid's bow and I am the perfect amount of pixie dusted out alrighty so I'm gonna go ahead and put some mascara on my lower lash line put on some lipstick and fix my eyebrows and I will be right back. I am back. So basically what I did was I set my face, I put on a little bit of mascara, I fixed my eyebrows, I put on some lipstick, which I really actually like this color, except that the formula is like really dry, so I'll just live through it. But the last thing I did was I did a nice rolled gold inner corner to kind of tie the look in together. And because my look was very matte, I wanted to add just a little bit of pop to it. Um, but this is my final look. I really hope that you learned something from this particular tutorial. Like I mentioned, it was my first ever requested video, which I am super stoked about. Um, so if you're watching this video and you want to see other videos that are more on the explanation side of things, just absolutely let me know and I can work through kind of creating that video for you. The next video in this series is actually going to be an eye brush breakdown. So I'm going to break down all the different names of brushes and then the types of brushes that work best for each individual look. Um, I do want to mention that I am by no means a professional makeup artist. Um, I basically have been learning through YouTube and just kind of having fun with makeup. Um, so there are brushes that are meant for things that I use for other things. And I did want to mention that because I basically have purchased and learned and taught myself how to do everything that I'm doing now. Um, but if there are brushes that I didn't mention or something specific that you want clarification on, definitely just leave a comment down below and let me know what those questions are. If there are videos that you would like to see in this series where I kind of break down a particular thing for you, um, also let me know down in the comments and I'll work through that. But this was super fun and super exciting. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like it, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button. Thank you so much for watching. I really truly appreciate you hanging out with me. I love you so, so much. Bye.